हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर सीरीज ऑन क्लॉक डोमेन क्रॉसिंग एट द एंड ऑफ पार्ट वन आई आस्क यू एन क्वेश्चन एंड आई कैप दैट क्वेश्चन अन आंसर्ड इन पार्ट वन एंड आई प्रॉमिस यू दैट आई विल क्रिएट पार्ट टू जस्ट टू आंसर पर्टिकुलरली दैट क्वेश्चन इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्टली आई विल रिपीट द क्वेश्चन एंड देन आई विल आंसर इट नाउ विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम दैट इज गेट स्टार्टेड friends on your screen you are seeing a research synchronizer which we have discussed in great depth in part 1 and i'm not going to repeat it here and i assume that you are well aware of the functionality of research synchronizer and those who have not watched my previous video please watch it otherwise it will not be worth to spend time here on the right hand side we have a user logic which we want to reset and on the left side we have a reset n signal which is active load type of reset signal with the help of this signal we are going to reset this design and in between we have a reset synchronizer now how do we reset as it is active load type of reset firstly we will make it zero so that my design should go into a reset state and then i will deassert this reset by making it equal to 1 then my user logic should come out of reset that is a expected functionality Now let us see how we meet this expected functionality with the help of our reset synchronizer. Let us start with step one. Let us make this reset signal equal to zero because it is active low type of reset, so that I can reset my user logic here. This reset signal is applied to asynchronous reset signal of both the flip flops in the reset synchronizer. Now, irrespective of clock status, whether edge is available or no. The the output of both the flip flops is going to get reset. Let us say the reset value is zero, so zero will be propagated to the output of both the flip flops, and this zero is going to our user logic, so our entire design will be in a reset state. So the first task is achieved. We are able to reset our design in the absence of the clock also. Now the next very important step I want to deassert this reset signal. As I deassert this reset signal, so what will happen? This is applied to both the flip flops. Now it can violate the setup and hold time of both the flip flops because this reset signal is a input signal which is not synchronous to this clock. It may be coming from a switch or something. So when I deassert it, it can violate the setup and hold time condition of both the flip flops, and they may go to a metastable state. At the end of first part, also I said the same thing, but this arrangement. is a specific arrangement where i asked you a question that flip flop 2 will not go into a metastable state when this reset n is deasserted particularly in that particular clock cycle this flip flop cannot go into a metastable state only flip flop 1 can go into a metastable state and this was a question and now i am going to answer it friends for reset deassertion purpose when we change reset n from 0 to 1 it is applied to asynchronous input of both the flip flops that means no flip flops can come out of reset state but their output depends upon the input value and this input value only travels to output whenever there is a clock edge in this example we have taken positive edge triggered flip flops so they will wait for positive edge of the clock as soon as the positive edge of the clock comes the input of flip flop 1 which is logic 1 start propagating at its output so you are saying the output start toggling from 0 to 1 but the clock edge is applied at the same time to flip flop 2 also and at that point of time the input to flip flop 2 was 0 and its output was also 0 in other words we can say that this 0 is going to propagate to the, its output which which will remain unchanged so that is the reason if input is not changed even though we violate the condition of setup and hold time the output of flip flop 2 will not go into a metastable state so keep a note if input is stable even though we violate the setup and hold time condition of a flip flop 2 this flip flop 2 will not go into a metastable state so far so good 
But let us say this reset n has violated a setup and hold time condition of flip flop 1 and its output is changing from 0 to 1 because its input is logic 1. So this may go into a metastable state and let us assume that it goes to a metastable state. Now there are three possible cases. Its output can get resolved to a value logic 0 or it can get resolved to logic 1. And sometimes we saw that if flip flop goes to a metastable state, its output keeps on toggling before getting settled to a particular value. And the time it takes to get settled is called resolution time. But this resolution time is not fixed, it is a probability. Sometimes this value gets settled very quickly and sometimes it takes huge amount of time. And in worst cases, even this is seen that this resolution time is even more than the clock period. In case you are operating your design at very high clock frequency when period is very small, in those cases, in those worst cases, even it is seen that this resolution time is more than the period or equivalent to the clock period, in that case, it can violate the setup and hold time requirement of flip-flop 2. So your flip-flop 2 can go into a metastable state. If flip-flop 2 goes into a metastable state, this can lead our user design to go into a metastable state. But this phenomenon is very rare. And especially you should be conscious when your clock frequency is very very high. Just for the precaution purpose, you can put more number of flip-flops in this synchronization chain. It will reduce the probability of large flip-flop in the synchronization chain to go into a metastable state. So you can save your design to go into a metastable state. And one very important point, the last flip-flop should not go into a metastable state. But we cannot 100% ensure that the last flip-flop in the chain will not go into a metastable state. Why we are protecting our last flip-flop in the chain to not go into a metastable state? If this goes into a metastable state, then our design can also go into a metastable state. We want to preserve our design. But we cannot 100% ensure that the last flip-flop in the chain will never go into a metastable state. Even though you put 3 flip-flops, 4 flip-flops or 5 flip-flops, adding more flip-flops in the chain will only reduce the probability of last flip-flop in the chain going into a metastable state, but you cannot ensure it 100%. Friends, actually there is a very beautiful theory called mean time between failure theory. It is also called MTBF. Maybe I will create a separate video on MTBF. And once it is created, I will share its link in the description section so that you can go through it. And with this, I'm going to end this session and I hope that this would be quite informative for all of you. And in future also, we are going to create many such videos. And if you really like this video, please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section. And to get yourself updated, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.